Hello YouTube. Well, today I'm in Browning, Montana at the Museum of the Plains Indians and you can see me having the mask on most of the time. Um, we're going to take a look at like all of the artifacts. This is the Blackfeet uh, reservation area. So uh, right around on the western side or eastern side of uh, Glacier National Park. So let's take a look. So this is a, a feather bonnet that came from uh, Chief Wades in the water. And he was like 18, is, this is from 1850, 1870, we think. Um, but he received the bonnet transfer, believes the bonnet was originally owned by a uh, lame bull due to that, that arrow that's right there in it. Because he, uh, lame bull had been shot in the head and his wife later incorporated the arrow into the bonnet on the, uh, the Blackfeet bonnet that we'll probably see later um, actually like weren't you know the classic ones you see in movies or so that you know, the big fanned out feathers these things stood it up into like a, a column I'm sure there's an illustration somewhere and that's what that uh, would have looked like before it got you know, 150 years old. Anyway, um, I gotta... if you paid attention in uh, history class, you know that the Spaniards first brought horses to the Americas in the 1500s. And by the 1700s, uh, they had made it up into the uh, plains course the Spaniards came way up, all the way up into uh, Oklahoma, I think, and all the way across the, the south uh, from either direction. But the horses changed, really drastically changed the lifestyle of the Plains Indians. And this is some of the things that they developed over the years. Uh, horse mask worn over the face of the horse. And this would have been hung around the neck of the horse as decoration. Uh, up there, I say, halter. And saddlebags. And a uh, saddle with a saddle blanket. Now those are like in the 19th century. So, pretty intricate beadwork on these. And all of the beads in the museum, uh, for the most part, came from Europe, from like where Czechoslovakia is, and were used as traders, trading items, and then eventually in the, in the Americas, uh, they started making beads here and really exploded with trade. Now, according to the handout I got, the Blackfeet um, pretty much made enemies of everybody. So they had their backs up against the Rockies. And uh, if you saw the uh, group of Blackfeet coming towards you, your best bet was to run. Uh, these are like war clubs with a a rock and eagle feathers. This oldest one is from the late 1800s. This is one that was made in the uh, early 1900s. But when they got a Winchester lever action rifle like this, um, they called it a many shots rifle. And uh, that really upped the ante some. But before that, it was bows and arrows and spears. So around the household they needed all kinds of different different tools and whatnot. Uh, that there is a uh, in the center is a TP door cover. Keep the wind and the rain out. And a uh, corn husk bag. Believe it or not that's woven from uh, corn husks. And we'll see more of that later, but they made a lot of 
scoops and things made from antlers and bones and whatnot. And of course you needed bags and containers to haul your stuff around. So everything from a tubular container to uh, baskets and bags of all sorts. And not only that, but got to haul the kids around. So we got these beautiful, beautifully worked cradle boards. And as the kids get bigger, of course, they want some toys. So they had their own the little little boys, uh, kids arrows, dolls, cradle boards to hold your doll. Um, if I'm not mistaken, that one is is a uh, it's like a bull roar thing. It looks like what we'd call bull roar. Yep. And uh, when you you can make them today, but with just a flat piece of wood, when this thing swinging around, you get a, an amazing sound. There's a, a game where you get a disc and trying to hit it on the fly. And of course, ladies like to, to dress up and make things pretty. There's beautiful done moccasins as well as knife sheath and leggings. And this breastplate, hang around the neck, and hang down, amazing work. So, I've got a lot of the um, clothing by different tribes. Some of it's mixed up in here is that um, they're not sure about which tribe some of the moccasins and some of the outfits came from, but the big thing in the background, that would be hung inside the teepee between the outer skin and the inner skin. It's the inner skin um, and helps insulate it. Uh, when I lived in a teepee, I had one. Made all the difference in the world uh, when it got done really cold in the winter and uh, never got around to making a backboard like this where you could set it up. It's basically on a tripod, it's something to lean against, you sit up. So it's a chair. In the back there is a uh, the uh, buffalo skin that's painted as decorative. I always like the uh, the shell decorations. And of course, you get a little more modern with pants and a dress shirt and a vest, and you now we're a buffalo coat lined with fabric. So men's accessories, guys, got to look good too. <laughs> Breastplate, a choker, a necklace with. Uh, Look like bear claws, and of course, you know, pretty moccasins, as well as decorative gloves and wristlets. And all the native peoples used tobacco in ceremonies, and uh, these some great pipes here, where some of these. Uh, the stems are wood, but the the bowls, some of them are wood, some of them are stone, and uh, and bags to hold them. Now they all used, like I said, they used tobacco, and uh, it was a, a sacred thing. And I was talking to our guide 
um, on the tour I was on yesterday about the fact that uh, Native Americans had problems with alcohol. Their bodies hadn't, hadn't uh, I'm not sure what the right word is, they don't metabolize um, alcohol the way Europeans did. Europeans used alcohol as a sacred thing, and uh, we get affected by tobacco, where they developed more tobacco. It's just a, a weird thing. Tell me if I'm wrong. And of course, for ceremonies, you got to have some music. So you got whistles and flutes, drums, rattles of all kinds. So he talked about making a pipe stem. So you start out with rock, curve it roughly, and then slowly work it down. Use a file, gouges, you know, our knife back in the old days. And then you start out with a straight stick and a very hot wire to stick it down through to make the hole. And end up with some uh, cool um, pipes. Now I tried making a pipe back in the days of my youth out of an antler. Um, I only smoked it once. And you don't want to do that. Burning bone is not a thing you want to inhale, trust me. Then you get feather work where you take and wind, make a flatten the end, make a loop, wind around it, add your little puffs, then you can attach it to strings and making your headdress or the uh, one of these fans. So one of the uh, religious movements that really upset the whites for whatever reason was a ghost dance, which is that's a, a shirt, ghost dance shirt where you would Dance to exhaustion, and the uh, it basically the idea was it was going to bring the the new age. I think they called it. Let me think. I'm sorry, the new world, and uh, as it's presented in films and such, it's that the buffalo would come back and the whites would disappear, which is probably what scared the, the whites. But it wasn't a violent thing. It was more of a, a prophecy that if the people all believed in it, it would come to pass. Like I said, it takes a, a long time to do a lot of this stuff. So you get the buffalo. So you got buffalo hide. These are soft skin or raw hide and to do the, uh, they use a scraper to scrape the uh, fur off, and you take the skin and um, mush up the brains of the animal. And this said you used, uh, um, could use the heart, and what else was it? Something else. Uh, Coagulated blood, fat, particles of flesh scraped off of the fleshing tool, and that was dried. And they would, uh, combination of brains, heart, and liver. And I never heard about the heart and liver, just about the brains. And uh, the comment I'd heard was, um, how do you know how much brains to use? Well, every, brain, every animal comes with just enough brains to tan its own hide. So anyway, they'd rub that in, mixture of fat and brains, and according to this, heart and liver, and roll it up, let it dry, and then when it was done, the uh, see the picture here of one digged out, scraping, and then putting this in, and after that, you'd take and 
twist it and stretch it and until it became pliable. And then you get the soft skin. The thing that always fascinated me, fascinated me was working with porcupine quills. And some of this is amazing. Tiny, tiny little baby porcupine quills on this one. But you take and uh, soften them up, soak them in water, or put them in your mouth, and then you would flatten them by uh, pulling it between your teeth and pulling it to flatten them out. And then you could wrap things with it or um, sewing where you take the soft skins, say underside shows no stitches and corner metal all punched holes, stitches through and then use strands of sinew to sew the, all these very the quills on. Always wanted to try it. A little hard to find porcupines. And, you know, really shouldn't kill them anyway. Well, I think that's going to do it for my visit here to the Museum of the Plains Indians. It's not very big, um, but it's got a lot of, of really cool stuff. And uh, some of it, this was built in 1941. And so some of the information is way out of date and uh, especially the first panel you coming in and about the migrations that a lot of that uh, didn't happen the way we thought it did back in 1941. So anyway, I want to get on the road and I'll see you somewhere down the road. Safe travels, my friends. Bye. Jumped off the wagon